There is much medical evidence that human life begins early in the development of a fetus. At only six to eight weeks of development, it is obvious that the developing fetus is not a blob of tissue, as some pro-abortionists would like us to believe, but a remarkably developed baby boy or girl. James Pendereff came to Orlando to open up a late-term abortion clinic, ostensibly to provide abortions through the 28th week, week of pregnancy, uh, about 10 years ago. I think that Pendergraph goes out of his way on his website to humanize the infant. He even uses the word baby. And he understands that it's a difficult time for a woman and for parents, and that they, they need to be afforded the time to spend time with their baby after the child is delivered. So it isn't, nobody's arguing about the humanity of the child anymore. That, that just doesn't happen anymore. We know from ultrasound that these are little human beings, and even the abortionist and everybody in the abortion clinic, everyone knows they're a little baby and that they're a little human being. At one point on the website, he actually talks about how even a child with handicaps can be seen as a special blessing by some parents. So the abortionist himself, James Pendergraft, is, is not in any way denying that these children are human beings. Um, the Orlando Women's Center website speaks about how they can help you make arrangements to properly bury the people that they murder. How crazy is that? One of the abortionists who works for Dr. Pentagraph, his name is Randall Whitney, uh, told me when I asked him about the fact that the babies are human and that they're moving, when he pulls them out, he happens to do a different kind of a later term abortion where he dismembers them while they're alive, but they don't come out whole. And when I referred to the fact that they were moving while he was dismembering them and they were alive, he looked at me incredulous and he said, Patty, the whole purpose of an abortion is to kill the fetus. He thought I was being foolish and ignorant uh, and naive to think that abortion was anything less. If an abortionist is going to do an abortion, he knows he's going to kill a living child. So it seemed foolish to him that I would suggest that it would be anything less. The humanity of the child is really not in question any longer. It used to be when I started to reach out to women who were pregnant about 15 years ago, that a lot of the women seemed to be under the impression that uh, they weren't carrying a child, but they were carrying a group of cells or something that hadn't turned into a child yet. But now the jig is up. We know these little ones in the womb are children. We can see them with ultrasound, especially now with the 3 and 4D ultrasound. And certainly on websites of very known abortionists such as George Tiller in Kansas, he provides uh, actually very beautiful images of children through all nine months of pregnancy. So the mothers whose babies he murders are confronted with exactly what they're doing and what he's helping them do. But medical and scientific evidence is not our ultimate source of truth. The Word of God, the Bible, must be our source for determining the sanctity of life from the moment of conception. In fact, the very name of God points us in the direction of the sanctity of life from the time it is conceived in the womb. The Bible tells us in Exodus 34 verses 5 through 7, the name of the Lord followed by the revelation of his character and nature, Jehovah Rachum, or God is merciful. The root of the Hebrew word for merciful, Rachum, was the first aspect of God's character to be revealed to the prophet Moses on Mount Sinai. Racham is also the root of the word in Hebrew for womb, Racham. The womb then, in its original Hebrew context, is the center or seat of mercy, the place from which the child, being formed in the image of God, is conceived, formed, nurtured, and finally born. Jesus declared in Matthew chapter 5, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. But the converse is also true. 
when men, for their own convenience, would send their swords into that place of life and mercy, defiling the sanctity of life within the rakam, the womb, it may be necessary to consider Christ's declaration of the wages earned by those who take up the sword. Those who live by the sword shall die by the sword. It is no coincidence that Jesus, the Messiah, would be conceived in a womb and born of a woman after a normal pregnancy. We need look no further than the story of Jesus' conception to see that life is indeed sacred from the womb. Christ himself was both fully man and fully God from the moment of his conception. We see the sanctity of life in the womb outlined clearly in Luke's Gospel. And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Highest will overshadow you. Therefore also, that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Shortly after Christ's conception was revealed to Mary through the angel Gabriel, Luke, in chapter 1, verse 26, tells us, Now Mary arose in those days, and went into the hill country with haste to a city of Judah, and entered the house of Zechariah, and greeted Elizabeth. And it happened, when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, that the babe leapt in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. We are told that Jesus was conceived exactly six months after Elizabeth's son, John the Baptist. It was John who leapt in the womb at the greeting of Mary and the coming of the preborn Savior into the house of his father, Zechariah. Jesus had to be somewhere within the first trimester of pregnancy the time when 88% of abortions in our nation are performed, when John leapt in the womb at the arrival of the Savior. It is also interesting to consider that the first gospel message was preached at the coming of Christ while he was still in the first trimester of development. The good news was initiated by the preborn infant John proclaiming the divinity of the baby Jesus, that the Savior had indeed come into the world. It is clear throughout the scriptures that life begins in the womb at conception. The psalmist declares, For thou didst form my inward parts, thou didst weave me in my mother's womb. I will give thanks to thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. The prophet Isaiah wrote, The Lord who made you and formed you in the womb. Likewise, the Lord said to Jeremiah, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you, and before you were born, I consecrated you to be a prophet to the nations. According to scripture, abortion is a sin against God, a violation of the sixth commandment, you shall not murder. It is the wanton killing of innocent human life in the womb, a place designed by God to be a refuge of life and mercy.